Good evening everyone. I'm Dr. Akshat Gangi, JR3 in Department of Radio Diagnosis in Grand Government Medical College and Sir JJ Group of Hospitals. Today my topic for presentation is MRI Imaging in Tuberous Sclerosis. Tuberous Sclerosis, also known as Tuberous Sclerosis Complex TSC, is a rare genetic disorder characterized by growth of non-cancerous tumors in various organs of the body involving brain, kidney, heart, lungs, eyes, skin and other organs. It affects multiple systems and provides a wide range of symptoms and complications. It is caused by mutation in one of two genes, TSC1 or TSC2, which instruct for making proteins that regulate cell growth and proliferation. Neurological symptoms such as seizures, developmental delay, intellectual disability, behavioral problem, and autism spectrum disorders are seen. Dermatological symptoms such as facial angiofibromas, chagrin patches, and hypomelanotic macules. Renal symptoms in form of renal angiomyolipomas and renal cysts, which may cause bleeding, kidney dysfunction, or hypertension. Cardiac symptoms that is cardiac rhabdomyomas may lead to arrhythmias or heart failure. Pulmonary symptoms TSC can cause lymphangiomyomatosis, which causes pulmonary symptoms. Ophthalmic symptoms such as retinal hematomas or other eye abnormalities. Diagnosis It is diagnosed based on clinical features, imaging, and genetic testing. There is a criteria for diagnosing TSC set by International Tuberous Sclerosis Complex Consensus Conference in 2012, which includes both major and minor features. The diagnosis requires two major features or one major feature plus two more more minor features. Genetic testing will also aid in the confirmation of diagnosis. Facial angiofibromas or forehead plaques. We are talking about major features now. Non-traumatic angual or periangual fibromas, hypomelanotic macules, chagrin patch, cortical tuber, subepidermal nodule, subepidermal giant cell astrocytoma that is SEGA, cardiac rhabdomyoma, renal angiomyolipoma. These are major features. Minor features are multiple randomly distributed Buted pits in dental enamel, hematomatous rectal polyp, bone cysts, cerebral white matter, radiated migration lines, gingival fibromas, non renal hematoma, retinal acromic patch. Role of MRI in diagnosing TSC. MRI plays a crucial role in diagnosing TSC. Brain imaging provides us with the diagnosis of cortical tubers, subpernamal nodules, and SEGA. It can also be used to monitor SEGA over time. Renal angiomyolipomas are detected in, uh, detected in abdominal imaging. Also, cardiac imaging helps us to pick up cardiac rhabdomyomas. Aims to provide corroboratory findings in case of clinical suspicion of TSC. Also, to raise suspicion of TSC in case the clinician has missed the findings and stigmata. Also, in known cases of TSC, we can serially monitor the disease progression and guide further management. Protocols we do brain imaging in axial T1, T2, flare. Gradient imaging and susceptibility weighted imaging. Renal imaging is done in routine abdominal protocol using fat suppressed sequences, T1, T2 weighted sequences, and cardiac imaging. Now, here is a case we have T2 flare diffusion weighted imaging and susceptibility weighted Im axial images of brain showing large ill defined lobulated solid cystic intraventricular lesion represented in foramen of Monroe extending into supracellular region. The lesions appear heterogeneously hyperintense on T1, T2 flare imaging with no diffusion restriction on DWI and shows multiple foci of blooming on susceptibility to imaging with heterogeneous post contrast enhancement. Features suggest your sub epidermal giant cell astrocytoma SEGA. Post operative HPE proved this to be SEGA and further workup confirmed diagnosis of TSC. Another, we have images axial and coronal T2 flare, T1 pre post contrast diffusion and susceptibility to images. Few subepidermal nodules are noted in bilateral lateral ventricles showing heterogeneous intensity on T2 weighted and T1 weighted imaging and show mild post contrast enhancement and blooming on SWI and do not show any diffusion restriction. On CT correlation, these nodules were calcifications, features such of subepidermal nodules. Here is another case axial T2 weighted flare, diffusion weighted imaging, and susceptibility imaging of brain. Multiple foci of T2 weighted flare hyperintense signal in bilateral frontoparietal regions, front right temporal and left occipital regions are noted, which are limited to cortical surface with cortical thickening and blurring of gray white matter differentiation. They do not show diffusion restriction, do not show blooming. Few of these show flare hyperintense signal extending from cortex towards the ventricle, that is, transmantle sign. Features such as focal cortical dysplasias. Another patient, which was known case of tuberous sclerosis, came to us for the diagnosis of renal angiomyolipomas. We did an abdominal CT, but on the thorax section, we were able to pick up this hypodense uh, area, which was uh, void of contrast filling. The patient was suspected for uh, 
rhabdomyoma, cardiac rhabdomyoma, and on 2D echo findings are consistent with cardiac rhabdomyoma. Another patient which uh, we have axial titubated flare diffusion and uh, uh, ADC images of brain, multiple scattered non enhancing areas appearing T2 weighted hypertense and T2 iso T1 isointense with no evidence of restricted diffusion. Bilateral cerebral hemispheres are noted, which are suggestive of cortical tubers and SEGA. We have CT findings as well in this patient. Axial sections of CCT thorax shows us subcentimeter sized nodules in both the lungs, multiple scattered, and thin walled lung cyst in subpleural region of left lower lobe. This was a case of uh, lymphangioleomyomatosis in a known case of tuberous sclerosis. Another patient came to us for the workup. The patient had a gross abdominal distension. Axial sections of CCT abdomen were taken in arterial and venous phases. This is also a known case of tuberous sclerosis. Multiple large well-defined lesions arising from bilateral kidneys are noted which showing both soft tissue and fat attenuation with significant internal vascularity during arterial and venous phases. Features suggestive of renal angiomyolipomas. Also, the maximum intensity projection image, that is MIP image, shows us arterial aneurysms noted within the lesion in left kidney. Clinical considerations: We are always, always take in account clinical stigmata, clinical findings, along with imaging findings to reach diagnosis of TSC in previously unknown cases. We can also use MRI to monitor the growth of SEGA, renal angiomyolipomas, and other lesions. MRI thus helps in guiding treatment decisions such as surgical intervention for, for symptomatic lesions. We cannot uh, ignore limitations of MRI. Uh, there is difficulty in distinguishing between TSC related lesions from malignant tumors on MRI and also it needs a certain level of expertise in interpreting MRI findings in context of TSC. Conclusion: MRI plays a crucial role in diagnosing, monitoring and managing tuberous sclerosis complex related manifestations. Yet, continued research and advancements are required for enhancing our understanding and treatment of TSC. These are my references. Thank you.